All right, all right. Can everybody hear us? How's the volume? Oh, getting audio all right all right good all right welcome to our live stream reading of the book of moron also known as the book of mormon i'm sure this will be great this will be fantastic all right can't wait yes so sazzy has briefly perused the first chapter i am essentially going in completely cold and he has pointed out that Unfortunately, this PDF does not have the glorious pictures that yeah. uh, our, our paper copy um, stolen but not stolen from the hotel. We, we asked yes. politely if we I, could take the books. Yes, I, I asked. and uh, They're pretty good. I mean, they're all white. <laughs> That's a problem. Um, well, of course, you know, everybody in the actually, Bible was white. Actually, right? doesn't the Book of Mormon take place in America or some nonsense? Like, there's some... I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering. It's been too long since I've dove something, into any of this something nonsense. Something about, like, the the indigenous peoples were cursed sons of Cain or something? I, I don't know. Well, hopefully they address it in the first book, right? We got the first book of Nephi is our, our, our starting point. <clears throat> Well, we'll we'll see. I'm I'm sure this will be a very interesting adventure. So, let's see here. Yeah, uh, Sassy's keyboard is a little louder than mine. the The mic is kind of pointed between us, so it'll probably pick that up. All right, Book of Moron. Sorry, Mormon. <clears throat> let's see here. Do you want to just like? Do you want to just like go through everything here? I mean, sure. We, this is our first look, right? So we, we need to see all of the... I, th I think we need all context. <clears throat> all context here. I mean, if people in chat know if there's multiple versions of the Book of Mormon, that would be nice to know. But I think there's only one that I know of. I, I mean, I looked I looked. There through... There might be reprintings, but I'm pretty I sure I couldn't find one. multiple versions. The Han... Mormons say they were from Missouri or something? Okay, that <clears throat> that would kind of make sense. Yeah, I think we I think we just need to start here. All right. <clears throat> Let's go for dramatic effect. Dramatic effect. The Book of Mormon. An account written by the hand of Mormon upon plates taken from the plates of Nephi. I just want to point out that if these were written on plates, either there were a lot of freaking plates or they were very big plates because there's about, what, in small print that normal Bibles get, there's a couple, like, hundred pages in this thing. So, I don't know how they fit them on plates, but they did. Well, that's the thing. Whenever I think of plates, I think of, like, inch-thick pieces of brass or something. Sure, sure. So, did somebody just have, like, a house full of shit and started carving cuneiform into this? I mean, keep in mind, I'm pretty sure Joseph Smith found these plates buried somewhere that an angel told him. So, <laughs> what, did, did he have a backhoe and he just bullshit. dug up? I call bullshit. Continue. Sorry, I just wanted to point that out. <clears throat> Wherefore, it is an abridgment of the record of the people of Nephi, and also of the Lamanites, written to the Lamanites, who are a remnant of the house of Israel, and also to Jew and Gentile, written by way of commandment, and also by the spirit of prophecy and of revelation, written and sealed up and hid up unto the Lord, that they might not be destroyed, to come forth by the gift and power of God unto the interpretation thereof, sealed by the hand of Moroni, and hid up unto the Lord, to come forth in due time by the way of the Gentile, the interpretation thereof by the gift of God. Okay, I would like to point out that is one goddamn sentence. So... What <clears throat> the fuck? Spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> the Book of Mormon is specifically chapter one, and pretty much the entire Book of Nephi uh, channels Paul. 
hardcore. Oh, God. And there's just lots of sentences that don't seem to end. So maybe we don't think about Paul. Hi, Gwen. Maybe just think of it like it's Lovecraft, right? H.P. Lovecraft also liked ridiculously long sentences that for no reason other than to make your tongue hate you. And for you to lose the point. But that's not through. even written well. No. No, it's not. Oh, God. Oh, God. It's also really wordy considering you only have so much worm in these plates. I don't know if this is part of the plates, but... But didn't you say later on, they're like, there was lots of other shit that happened. Oh, no, no. It, we didn't have room on the plates, so just take our word for it. Yes. That is also a true statement. <laughs> An abridgment taken from the Book of Esther also, which is a record of the people of He went to Jared, who were scattered at the time the Lord confounded the language of the people when they were building a tower to get to heaven, which is to show upon unto the remnant of the house of Israel what great things the Lord hath done for their fathers, and that they may know the covenants of the Lord that they are not cast off forever, and also to the convincing of the Jew and the Gentile that Jesus is the Christ, the eternal God, manifesting himself unto all nations. And now, if there are faults, they are the mistakes of men. Wherefore, condemn not the things of God, that ye may be found spotless at the judgment seat of Christ. I would like to point out that uh, after the whole confusing of languages in Tower of Babel that mankind managed to get around that and... Go to space. And go to space and walk on the moon and do a bunch <laughs> of things, so screw you, God. <laughs> so this is two sentences. I feel like this was an exercise in literary self-masturbation. I mean, Joseph Smith, you realize he had to write this twice. He was probably going Oh, that's to... right, because he's pretending. Yeah, so someone pointed out in chat that there, there are two versions. There's the version that Joseph Smith wrote and that his wife took and hid from him. And then there's a new <laughs> version he had to write. But he doesn't match because God said translate off the other set of plates. <laughs> Unfortunately, South Park did get that correct. Dum, da, dum, dum, dum. <laughs> All right. Okay, now that we've read two sentences and are done with the first page, let's move on. <clears throat> okay, yeah, I'm just going to move so, on past so that, so, this. No, no, hold on. So, so the, the Book of Mormon adds a bunch more bullshit on top of the old bullshit. So I, I, I say this to me that they're still good with what was written in the Old Testament, New Testament. They just have the New, new Testament, the Book of Mormon. Moron. Moron, sorry, yes, yes. See? I also like that the first that uh, first and second Nephi are the start of the book, and third and fourth Nephi are like an entire book later. Well, he came back. He came back. <laughs> he's, like the, he's like Palpatine. Somehow Palpatine has returned. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Contents. Test oh, he's a prophet. The prophet Joseph Smith. Yeah, well, he found the plates. Moroni came to him. Okay. Yeah, I mean, he has to be a prophet. That That's the bar minimum of prophecy, prophecy right? Or being a prophet. Pro I thought you were going to say prophetiness, and I was going to yeah. be like, oh, that's that's an amazing term. My brain was catching up. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so is his. <laughs> the words of Mormon. I like how the pronunciation guy is at the back. I would, well, why, I would where else would you? The, I would have put that at the front. But why? It's part of the index, technically. I mean, like it's it's a it's an appendix kind of kind of resource. All right, introduction. <clears throat> the Book of Mormon is a volume of holy scripture comparable to the Bible. It is a record of. Hey, wait, wait! That was one sentence. They used a period. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was able to take a breath and everything. So, so did Joseph Smith write the the whatever the hell we just read or? Was that someone different? Was that like whoever published this copy? Um, I think. I mean, it's signed the prophet of Joseph Smith, the translation translated by Joseph Smith. No, uh, no, it's not bad that you own this book. I'm we, sorry. Do we, we do too. We do too. To be fair, uh, like this might be a slight spoiler. This this book was almost part of the satanic self affirmation ritual. It was almost burned. Yeah, we went with the other one. But we decided to do other things with this. So I think future this, content. I think this is Smithian. And then this is an introduction written by somebody else. I mean that. Yeah, this right. is written by. 
other people. They should have been inspired to stick to fingerprinting, finger painting. <laughs> I'm just thinking of people eating glue right now. I don't know why. No, you know why. <laughs> 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 All right, sen- sentence two of the introduction. Where, where are we at here? Sen- sentence two. It is a record of God's dealings with ancient inhabitants of the Americas and contains the fullness of the everlasting gospel. Isn't fullness misspelled? Yes, I was thinking that, and I didn't... Unless that's a different way to spell it. It's, it's, it should be American English. It's Moroni English. <laughs> it's Moron English. It's Moron English. <laughs> the book was written by many ancient prophets, by the spirit of prophecy and revelation. Their words, written on gold plates, were quoted and abridged by a prophet historian named Mormon. The record gives an account of two great civilizations. One came from Jerusalem in 600 BC and afterwards separated into two nations known as the Nephites and the Lamanites. They were laminated hardcore. The other came much earlier when the Lord confounded the tongues at the Tower of Babel. He was a really good kisser. This group is known as the Jaredites, and they went to Jared. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> I just realized that I'm using the he went to Jared voice. Oh, oh you are, yeah. <laughs> After thousands of years, all were destroyed except the Lamanites. And they are among the ancestors of the American Indians. So, citation needed. No, bro, inspired. Like, citation fucking needed. Inspired work of God. Because I was under the impression that... I trust the Book of Mormon because the Book of Mormon says I should trust it. I was it's under... no better than the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I was under the impression that the Native American tribes came from northern Asian tribes that crossed between over the Bering Strait before it was oh, so... covered in water. <clears throat> yeah. That, that is the my working understanding, whether or not science has updated that, because that's a little bit old for me. How the fuck would people from Jerusalem and that area get over there? Did angels just whisk them away? God, bro. Is this like how kangaroos hopped from Mesopotamia down to Australia after the flood? Ooh, ooh better. They came on asteroids like squids. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Alien species completely. The crowning event recorded in the Book of Moron is the personal ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ among the Nephites soon after his resurrection. It puts forth the doctrines of the gospel, outlines the plan of salvation, and tells men what they must do to gain peace in this life and eternal salvation in the life to come. I would like to point out that this is partly just because of our history, I think. I don't think it was necessarily intentional. But after transitioning, I did notice a lot of little inadvertent misogynistic jabs like this. Where it's always men. Well, yeah, it's part of the history, but it's also part of the tone of all the books, right? I mean, like... Well, it, it, uh, probably and the culture and where the books come from. Maybe it's an Abrahamic faith thing. I don't know, but it's always like, and then he spoke to the race of men, or what men must do, or call upon you, call upon the Lord, and ye shall be saved. Any man shall be saved. And it's like implied that it goes for men and women, but it's always directed at men. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's necessarily unique 100% to the Abrahamic faiths, but it's definitely part of the culture in which the Abrahamic faiths come from. It's a very patriarchal society, so yeah. you, you kind of get get that vibe pretty hardcore off of it. After Moron completed his writings, he delivered the account to his son Moroni, who added a few words of his own and hid up the plates in the hill... Cumora? Do we just go with Kamora? Kamora. No, just Kamora? Come, come on, Kamora. Okay. On September 21st, 1823. Wait a second. <laughs> we got a problem here. <laughs> the same Moroni, then a glorified. Okay, see, now we're starting to get some problems. 
from my point of view. <laughs> no, let's, let's, let's unpack those problems. <laughs> Okay. Was it the 1823 okay. part that <laughs> fucked you over? Okay. Okay. So, I'll just read the paragraph and then we'll deconstruct uh, Sure, sure. Fair enough. After Mormon completed his writings, he delivered the account to his son Moroni, who added a few words of his own and hid the plates in the hill of Camorra. On September 21st, 1823, the same Moroni, then a glorified resurrected being appeared to the prophet Joseph Smith and instructed him relative to the ancient record and its destined translation into the English language. Seer stones. We're, we're hinting at seer stones. In due course, the plates were delivered to Joseph Smith, who translated them by the gift and power of God. Twice. The record, I wonder if they'll bring that up. The record is now published in many languages as a new and additional witness that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God, and that all who will come unto him and obey the laws and ordinances of his gospel may be saved. So, is this not like a stumbling block for people that are not indoctrinated? I mean... I'd have a lot of trouble believing Joseph Smith found a bunch of gold plates buried in the Hill of Camorra in 1823 after an angel appeared to him. I mean, this 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 well, starts to sound real bad. It, it actually it actually says they were delivered <clears throat> to him. Oh, I guess. I guess. So yeah. were they just like dug up and handed to him? Well, I mean, like this is this that is, could is be some for interpretation, this is right? some pretty fucking bold claims here. It almost feels like Joseph Smith got off his meds. Uh, this whole book is just one long schizophrenic rant. It's p possible. I mean, I've hallucinated noises before, and that was very uncomfortable. I mean, is it any crazier than half the claims like the Old or New Testament makes? Other, I would say the, yes, other because it's modern day. this was I mean, 1823. So yeah. I, I would say yes, actually. This is probably more crazy. So this whole premise is based on... The, the, the premise of this book is based on the idea that some dude mm -hmm. supposedly got visited by the resurrected angelic form Marauder. of some old dude who then gave him knowledge to translate stuff well no no so we probably haven't got to that point cause... well it's it says it says oh oh well okay the the angel didn't do it it was the gift and power of God that did it. Right. So right, we've right. also got Yahweh hanging out. Like, I, 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 I do like this. that uh, Moroni, uh, before burying the plates the first time, cheekily added his own little, his notes to the end of the book, the plates. Yeah, so, like, was there extra room? Like, in, in case of addendum. <laughs> <laughs> There's, like, an empty plate at the back. It's a change log somewhere. <laughs> all, all the things we have changed about this. Circa 1728 Moroni. <laughs> Free donuts on Wednesdays. <laughs> Shit, this is the wrong plate. <laughs> well, I guess I'll just leave it there. Maybe no one will notice. What could the donut mean? Concerning this record, the Prophet Joseph Smith. Now, why does it have to be capitalized? That just seems kind of narcissistic. Come on. <laughs> True. <laughs> I told the brethren that the Book of Mormon was the most correct. <laughs> correct book i mean yeah this is amazing so, so you, do you think that joseph smith has the same narcissistic personality disorder that kent has it wouldn't mean, surprise me I, oh my god 
Concerning this record, the prophet Joseph Smith said, quote, I told the brethren that the Book of Mormon was the most correct of any book on earth and the keystone of our religion, and a man would get nearer to God by abiding by its precepts. Wait, Mo- wait. would get nearer to God by abiding by its precepts than any other... Oh, wow. Is this the brethren wait, that that crazy Karen fuck. was talking about in Walmart? You think she's a Mormon? Maybe. By the way, okay. So I've got a sticky note here. Grab a pen. Hold on. Okay, I have a pen. I'm going to write the earth is round. I'm going to sign this. Okay. I am now folding the sticky note that says the earth is round and has my name in it in half. And I'm going to label this Willow's Testament. Okay. Can you bury it in the backyard? This is more (laughs) correct than the Book of Mormon. Well, I mean, yeah, we need to bury it in the backyard and see if someone finds it in a couple thousand years. I've literally just refuted the Book of Mormon's opening introductory claim. <laughs> Sorry. Buckle because up. Because they're wrong <laughs> about how the Native American tribes got here. Mm-hmm. Buckle up. It gets Fuck worse. Fuck them. It gets worse. Hoven's Book of Mormon. Uh, yeah, someone said um, the Book of Moronism should be Hoven's next book. <laughs> I could agree with that. The Book of Moronism sounds like something you would like. Uh, the, Come second, on, you moron. the second voice is Sazzy, if you're wondering. Yes, this is Sazzy, the uh, technician slash quality, emo- con- quality, quality control, control slash emotional support. Emotional slash... support. Uh, I, I do help you work on content occasionally. Good and sad. I do all the back the background stuff. <laughs> background. <laughs> 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 in addition to joseph smith the lord provided for 11 others to see the gold plates for themselves and to be special witnesses of the truth and divinity of the book of mormon the written testimonies are included herewith as the testimony of the three witnesses and the testimony of the Eight witnesses. You know, I kind of wish they fucked up the math. Yeah, no, that'd be. So <laughs> Unfortunately, they got that right. If someone in ch- in chat knows, like, has like, does like does the Mormon faith have a picture of these plates? Were they ever seen? I am just genuinely curious. How many plates we're talking? So we put something like this on display. Is it like there are multiple pallets out in the backyard, and, and you, That's you, just, an interesting you just walk point. through like, a seventeen mile long hike of pallets of well, gold like, plates? So we're talking about. Assumingly, like a, a cabin in 1823, right? Oh no, it would have been nicer than that. I mean, Joseph Smith. Um, Maybe not like a giant house. It was in like a cellar, manor, but it would have right? been like a little manor. So, I mean, they could, what, they could play assuming right? this is true, okay? No, it's true. Just give him the benefit. It, it of the It said doubt. so. Just it's give, the best, most accurate book. Just give him the benefit <laughs> of the doubt, okay? Does <laughs> Does Joseph Smith just start coming home with boxes upon boxes of plates? And just start filling the house with them. And then his wife is like, the fuck is this shit? And he's like, no, no, you can't look at him. The angel told me only I could look at him. <laughs> he's like CC from New York. He's yeah. to translate them into, like, in the carriage. He has back. To, yeah, he has, to, like, <laughs> he has to, like, take them out, out into the shed one at a time and translate them and doesn't let her look at him. <laughs> <laughs> and there's just these boxes everywhere that he won't let her touch or open. And they're filling the house. Joseph here. And he's like talking. Joseph, Joseph from Missouri. Yeah. Good afternoon. Good, good morning. morning. Hello. J- J- JS from uh, Missouri here. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, as far as uh, they know, they don't have as much, even as much of a sketch of these plates. Oh, God. So we're supposed to believe that all this is the inspired work of God translated off golden plates that I can't even go physically touch, view, or see somewhere. Not even a sketch. That's, wow. See, that to me, why doesn't someone have that as a hangout? 
right? You're talking 1823 when these plates were discovered. We're not talking like, oh, they were lost to time on the Ark or, or whatever, or, you know, they're lost in the, the Holy Crusades or something. We're talking something that should still be around, especially being this important uh, to the faith as an artifact, but not a... Not even and, a, and not even not a, a single plate. plate. We just have the, the translated copy that Joseph Smith promised totally did correct. And totally did off of plates. And this totally wasn't a fever dream from Scarlet Fever or something. <laughs> you just had a really bad bout of dysentery. Yeah. Like, that would be my hang-up, at least. <laughs> they could use the van CC drive to transfer them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, go ahead. And, and CC tries to <laughs> proselytize to them about flat earth while he's changing the plate. Well, he's translating well, the plates. I, I kind of hope the Book of Mormon does talk about how the Earth was formed. Although, Gwen, I, yeah, no, yeah, that's kind of what I figured, right? It, it's totally self-supporting. Circular reference would like to talk with the, the writers. Oh, here we go. Another uh, thinly veiled misogyny. We invite all men everywhere to read the Book of Moron, to ponder in their hearts the message it contains, and then to ask God, the Eternal Father, in the name of Christ... If the book is true. All right, done, dusted, it's not. Those who pursue this course and ask in faith will gain a testimony of its truth and divinity by the power of the Holy Ghost. See Moron 10, verses 3 through 5. Yeah, see the end of the book where the angel Moroni, like, scribbled in free donuts on Wednesdays. It's below that one. If Joseph Smith did get arrested for being a con man, that would be amazing. That would truly be amazing. I'm sure it would just be used to feed the Christian persecution complex, though. Yeah. Those who gain this divine witness from the Holy Spirit will also come to know by the same power that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, that Joseph Smith is his revelator and prophet in these last days. The final days of the last days of the last days. <laughs> and that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the Lord's kingdom once again established on earth, preparatory to the second coming of the Messiah. Yeah. Wow. Oh, we've got a moderator on. CC's wife pops in and engraves, oh my God, you are a moron to the plates and CC forgets to end. <laughs> 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 I feel like <laughs> that would probably happen. I mean, I, I feel like CC would just let that go, though, given he let the. No, that's that's the their rant, point, though. Yeah. Right? Like, let the rant happen. All right, shall we uh, dive to the next? Oh God, we got testimonies to go. Oliver Apparently. Oliver Cowdery sounds like a World of Warcraft character. I need you to go into the dungeon and destroy Oliver Cowdery's chrysalis. And Martin Harris sounds like the uh, prophecy king for Oblivion. <laughs> the testimony of the three witnesses presented by Mr. Willem Dafoe. Be it known unto all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people, unto whom this work shall come, that we, through the grace of God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, have seen the plates which contain this record which is a record of the people of Nephi, and also of the laminated Lamanites, their brethren, and also of the people who went to Jared, who came from the tower which hath been spoken. And we also know that they have been translated by the gift and power of God, for his voice hath declared it unto us. Wherefore we know of a surety that the work is true, and we also testify, we have been seen the, the engravings which are upon the plates, and they have been shown unto us by the power of God, and not of man. So, they've seen. Wait, the wait, they they can't they can't just look at the plates themselves. Is this like the Ark of the Covenant, where if they they look at the plates, they like obliterate themselves, like? Why do they have to have God to look at the plates? This doesn't make sense to me. I, <laughs> I mean, I just want to know how much those three individuals were paid to write this testimony. 
<laughs> These are like his frat boy friends. Yeah, like his, like, his closest brother. Yeah, dude. Like, Will Totes write about the plates, dude. You want some shrooms, bro? <laughs> I mean, like... It's kind of bad or a, a little a little concerning when you write a book that's supposedly the inspired word of God or truth or, or whatever, and you have within the first few pages a bunch of testimony that is trying to help bolster the credibility you have. And they're like, the magic, let us see it. Yeah, I mean, like, <laughs> that should be a red flag. I'm Use like, the magic goggles, I beg you. Would, You'll would, see the same thing. Wouldn't you think the, the power and the truth of the book would become evident by reading the book versus being accosted immediately no 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 we're, we're totally serious it's totally real my friends told me so or confirmed so at least where did i leave off in here um uh and, and we declare with words of soberness oh yeah because they have to point out that they're not drunk like rick And it is marvelous in our eyes, nevertheless, the Lord, wait, yeah, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Nevertheless, the voice of the Lord commanded us that we should bear record of it. Wherefore, to be obedient into the commandments of God, we bear testimony of these things. And we know that if we are faithful in Christ, we shall rid our garments of the blood of all men and be found spotless before the judgment seat of Christ, and we and shall dwell with him eternally in the heavens and the and the honor be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, which is one God. Amen. You know, that entire paragraph could be, like, cut down to, like, what, two, three sentences tops? I don't understand why the Abrahamic text always have to, like, just beat you over the head with so many words and so many sentences to say something kind of trivial. What would be interesting is... The abridged, abridged version? No, if um, if people could... Um, I, I know there's stuff to check and see who wrote different stuff and, like, cross-reference to see um, based on writing styles. Did Joseph Smith write this and did, just put three yeah, friends down? Yeah, did Joseph Smith <laughs> write the testimony of the other witnesses... Oh, that'd be fun. That would be a fun analysis. Because I think they figured out who Q was based on that. Um, Q and on. I don't have the money uh, to pay for starter. that. But it would be I'm a, not doing it. It would but... be a very interesting analysis, though, to see if uh, if Joseph Smith really wrote this and just like slapped three friends on him, had them read it and go, do you agree with this enough to like endorse it? <laughs> I'll pay you. I'll pay you. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. So he testifies as well. Great. What a fucking narcissistic prick. <clears throat> The testimony of the eight witnesses. Be it known unto all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people unto whom this work shall come, that Joseph Smith, Jr.? I guess it's Oh, it's one of the abbreviations. But... The translator of this work has shown unto us the plates of which hath been spoken, which have the appearance of gold from Roslyn Capital, and all many, and as many of the leaves as the said Smith has tra- Good God. And as many of the leaves as the said Smith has translated, we did handle with our hands. And we also saw the engravings thereon, all of which has the appearance of ancient work and of curious craftsmanship. Okay, okay. So having the... It was aliens. Having the appearance of ancient work doesn't mean it is ancient work. There's some pretty good forgeries. I mean, crap, if, if someone, if we handed someone the skull, your skull, right, and it said, hey, is this is a real animal skull to, like, someone in the 1820s, they probably couldn't tell that it's plastic. It was time travel. I mean, like, <laughs> so why should that support, like, make me believe that this book is more accurate or more truthful, considering that they don't prove that it is ancient work. It just says, oh, well, it has the appearance of ancient work, therefore it must be just ancient. And this we bear record with words of soberness. So they have to point out that they weren't drinking either. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> and this we bear record with words of soberness that the said Smith has shown unto us. For we 
Oh God, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> this is when this is this is the moment the channel takes a very different turn. We start doing ASMR instead, but it's it's religious ASMR. Oh we just God, read, we just read all the testaments. <laughs> For we have seen and hefted. Ooh, they were hefting. I, I feel like I feel like looking at the plates wasn't the only thing these eight dudes were doing in the they, back they, room of Joseph were, Smith's basement. They were hefting um, Ken Hovind's big D. What are you doing down there? Oh, we're, we're hefting. I mean, looking at the plates. Don't come in. You're not allowed to see them. <laughs> I mean... Because she's not allowed to see the well, plates. Female. Oh, that's true. Okay, let's let's try to get through this sentence smart. again. <laughs> Grace is all up in Mary. <laughs> <laughs> For we have seen and hefted and know of a surety that the said Smith... Why do they keep saying that? Oh my God. Has got the plates of which we have spoken. And we give our names unto the world to witness unto the world that which we have seen. And we lie not, God bearing witness of it. I love how they're like, we're telling the truth. Believe us. Uh. <laughs> we're not lying. Don't lie to me. Don't fight with me, Junior. I'm not fighting. Don't argue with me. I'm not arguing, Mom. <laughs> Ken Hovind's Big D. Yeah. Uh, big D, okay? The dinosaur adventure land. <clears throat> oh, no, it looks like green cheese, okay? <laughs> this is just Ken Hovind's second dissertation. Oh, maybe I should read the next <laughs> one. Ken Hovind. There we go. Oh, <laughs> it's the long it's one. It's a long one. <laughs> can, can your voice take it for Probably that not. My voice is already <laughs> destroyed. Bulimia is a bitch, dude. The Prophet Joseph Smith's own words about the coming forth, bring forth, okay, <clears throat> of the Book of Mormon are on the evening of the, checks notes, 21st of September, checks notes again, 1823, I betook myself to prayer and supplication to Almighty God. While I was thus in the act of calling upon God, I discovered a light appearing in my room, which continued to increase until the room was lighter than at noonday, when immediately a person... Oh, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Wait a second, wait a second. So, I think we need some music for this. I mean, uh, you want, like, epic? epic? No, 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 I have, I have something far better. Hold on a second. So the problem is you didn't set up the actual... I, I think this will just take a moment. I need to grab. Could just play it to the speed here so the mic like pick it up. It's kind of it's kind of jank, but it works. I could do that. I, I just feel like it will really I feel like it will really make the experience. If there's better. some background. Yes, because uh, the music I use is uh, I can credit it in the uh, description, and it's allowed to be used for streaming and whatnot. Is my mouse still derping around in there? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's capturing your mouse. <laughs> Alright. Let me go here. Music. Yes. So let's see if I can do this. I'm going to turn it down. Oh god, now I know our voice. Uh, right here. Just, just go to the main. Can you all hear that? It'll be a few seconds. You should be getting music in the background now. Mm -hmm. 
make sure that uh... all right now we, we should have a, a much better experience <clears throat> on the evening of the 21st of September 1823 I betook myself to prayer and supplication to Almighty God while I was thus in the act of calling upon God I discovered a light appearing in my room it's the aliens which continued to increase until the room was lighter than at noonday when immediately a personage appeared at my bedside it was the lizard folk standing in the air for his feet did not touch the floor. Definitely alien. He had on a loose robe of mostly exquisite whiteness. Kinky. It was a whiteness beyond anything earthly I had ever seen. Nor do I believe that any earthly thing could be made to appear so exceedingly white and brilliant. It turned me on. His hands were naked, and his arms also a little above the wrist. Mm. So also were his feet naked, as were his legs. I like feet. A little above the ankles. His head and neck were also bare. I could discover that he had no other clothing on but his robe, as it was open, so that I could see into his bosom. Oh, yeah. Not only was his robe exceedingly white, but his whole person was glorious beyond description, and his countenance truly like lightning. I was ready. The room was exceedingly light, but not so very bright as immediately around his person. When I first looked upon him, I was afraid, but the fear soon left me. He called me by name, Where and, said, my name? and said unto me that he was a messenger sent from presence of God to me, and that his name was Moroni, that God had a work for me to do, and that my name should be had for good and evil among all nations, kindreds, and tongues, and that it should be both good and evil spoken among all people. He said there was a book deposited, written upon gold plates, giving an account of the former inhabitants of this continent and the source from whence they sprang. He also said that the fullness <clears throat> of the everlasting gospel was contained in it, as delivered by the Savior to the ancient inhabitants. Also, that there were two stones and silver boughs, and these stones, fastened to a breastplate, constituted what is called the Urim and Thummim. Deposited with the plates and the possession and use of these stones were what constituted seers in ancient and former times, and that God had prepared them for the purpose of translating the book. Again, he told me that when I got those plates of which he had spoken, for the time that they should be obtained was not yet fulfilled, I should not show them to any person, neither the uh, rest plate. He was private. I like that. With the Urim and Thummim, only to those to whom I should be commanded to show them. And if I did, I should be destroyed. Well, I'm a masochist. While he was conversing with me about the plates, the vision was opened to my mind that I could see the place where the plates were deposited. And that's so clearly and distinctly that I knew the place again when I visited it. After this communication, I saw the light in the room begin to gather immediately around the person of him who had been speaking to me. And it continued to do so until the room was again left dark, except just around him, when instantly I saw, as it were, a conduit open right up into heaven. And he ascended till he entirely disappeared, and the room was left as if it had been before this heavenly light had made its appearance. Apparently I'm not getting late tonight. I lay musing on the singularity of the scene. 
and marveling greatly at what had been told to me by this extraordinary messenger. Those feet. When, in the midst of my meditation, I suddenly discovered that my room was again beginning to get lighted, and in an instant, as it were, the same heavenly messenger was again by my bedside. My luck had changed, huh? He commenced and again related the very same things which he had done in his first visit without the least variation, which having done, he informed me of great judgments which were coming upon the earth with great desolations by famine, sword, and pestilence. I'm into whatever you are. And that these grievous judgments would come on the earth in this generation. Having related these things, he again ascended as he had done before. By this time, so deep were the impressions made on my mind that sleep had fled from my eyes, and I lay overwhelmed in astonishment at what I had both seen and heard. But what was my surprise when again I beheld the same messenger at my bedside? Stop teasing me already. And heard him rehearse or repeat over again to me the same things as before. His voice was like velvet. And added a caution to me, telling me that Satan would try to tempt me, in consequence of the indigent circumstances of my father's family, to get the plates for the purpose of getting rich. This he forbade me, saying that I must have no other object in view in getting the plates but to glorify God, and must not be influenced by any other motive than that of building his kingdom. Otherwise, I could not get them. After this third visit, he again ascended into heaven as before, and I was left again to ponder on the strangeness of what I had just experienced. Had he touched me? When almost immediately after the heavenly messenger had ascended from me for the third time, the cock crowed, and I found the day was approaching, so that our interviews must have occupied the whole of that night. There was also a goat in the room. I shortly after arose from my bed, and as usual went to the necessary labors of the day. But in attempting to work as at other times, I found my strength so exhausted as to render me entirely unable. My father, who was laboring along with me, discovered something to be wrong with me, and told me to go home. I started with the intention of going to the house, but in attempting to cross the fence out of the field where we were, my strength entirely failed me, and I fell helpless on the ground, and for a time was quite unconscious of anything. The first thing I can recollect was a voice speaking unto me, calling me by name. I looked up and beheld the same messenger standing over my head, surrounded by light as before. He then again related unto me all that he had related to me the previous night, and commanded me to go to my father and tell him of the vision and commandments which I had received. I'm into it. I obeyed. I returned to my father in the field and rehearsed the whole matter to him. He replied to me that it was of God, and told me to go and do as commanded by the messenger. I left the field, and went to the place where the messenger had told me the plates were deposited, and owing to the distinctness of the vision which I had had concerning it, I knew the place the instant that I arrived there. Convenient to the village of Manchester, Ontario County, New York, stands a hill of considerable size, and the most elevated in any of the neighborhood. On the west side of this hill, not far from the top, under a stone of considerable size, lay the plates deposited in a stone box. The stone was thick and rounding in the middle of the upper side, and thinner toward the edges, so that the middle part of it was visible under the ground, but the edge all around was covered with earth. Having removed the earth, I obtained a lever, which I got fixed under the edge of the stone, and with a little exertion, raised it up. I looked in, and there indeed did I behold the plates, the urim and the thummim, and the breast plate, as stated by the messenger. 
The box in which they lay was formed by laying stones together in some kind of cement. In the bottom of the box were laid two stones crossways in the box, and on these stones lay the plates and the other things with them. I made an attempt to take them out, but was forbidden by the messenger, and was again informed that the time for bringing them forth had not yet arrived, neither would it until four years from that time. But he told me that I should come to that place precisely in one year from that time, and that he would there meet with me, and that I should continue to do so until the time should come for obtaining the plates. Accordingly, as I had been commanded, I went at the end of each year, and at each time I found the same messenger there, and received instruction and intelligence from him at each of our interviews respecting what the lord was going to do and how and in what manner his kingdom was to be conducted in the last days i couldn't imagine at length the time arrived for obtaining the plates the urim and thummim and the breastplate on the 22nd day of september 1000 827, having gone as usual at the end of another year to the place where they were deposited, the same heavenly messenger delivered them up to me with his charge, that I should be responsible for them, that if I should let them go carelessly, or through any neglect of mine I should be cut off, but that if I would use all of my endeavors to preserve them, until he, the messenger, should call for them, they should be protected. I soon found out the reason why I had received such strict charges to keep them safe, and why it was that the messenger had said that when I had done what was required at my hand, he would call for them. For no sooner was it that known that I had them, that the most strenuous exertions were used to get them from me. Every stratagem that could be invented was resorted to for that purpose. The person became more bitter and severe than before, and multitudes were on the alert continually to get them from me if possible. But by the wisdom of God, they remained safe in my hands until I had accomplished by them what was required at my hand. When, according to arrangements, the messenger called for them, I delivered them up to him, and he has them in his charge until this day, being the second day of May, 1,838. For a more complete account, see Joseph Smith, History in the Pearl of Great Price. Only on Pornhub. The ancient record thus brought forth from the earth as the voice of a people speaking from the dust and translated into modern speech by the gift and power of God, as attested by divine affirmation, was first published to the world in the year 1830 as the Book of Moron. That was oddly sexual. (laughs) (laughs) Chat. Chat enjoyed a good chunk of how sexual it was. I believe my favorite was uh, that this is the best reading this book has ever had. I'm glad. Because <laughs> I couldn't pay attention. I, mean, I, mean, I, was, I was looking at the number of watchers, and I don't think it dipped too bad. <laughs> well, I, I want to know uh, what, what Joseph Smith's safe word ended up being. <laughs> Golden plates, golden plates. I know you want them. No, I want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even made it to the text proper. Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. I thought, wait, I thought we just got a basic explanation of the Book of Mormon and this very outlandish tale of Joseph Smith being visited by Moroni multiple times. Also, recognize the fact that how many plates had to make this book? Right, given the font size, number of pages, and how much you can fit on a plate. Joseph Smith dug those bastards up with a shovel. Well, it, it's kind of like the uh, the joke in Lord of the Beans that VeggieTales made. It's a highly efficient tongue. You can fit a whole book on a napkin. Yeah, I'm I'm calling bullshit. That, that just adds so much more supernatural BS to this. Pull up chat here again. All right. A brief explanation about the Book of Moron. 
The Book of Moron is a sacred record. We've already been over this. God damn it. Of peoples in ancient America and was engraved upon metal. Wait a second. I thought this was about the laminated people from near Jerusalem. Well, the no, the tribes split a bunch more, right? Oh, so this God. is this is the 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 story of the American versions. Oh God. <laughs> and was engraved upon metal plates. Sources from which this record was compiled include the following. The plates of Nephi, which were of two kinds, the small plates and the large plates. The former were particularly, more particularly devoted to spiritual matters and the ministry and teachings of the prophets, while the later were occupied mostly by a secular history of the people's concern. From the time of Mosiah, however, the large plates also included items of major spiritual importance. Plus three shovel smiting, I like it. <laughs> The plates of Moron, which consisted of an abridgment by Moron from the large plates of Nephi, with many commentaries. These plates also contained a continuation of the history by Moron and additions by his son Moroni. Oh, I like how we have small plates and big plates. But it's commentaries on the big plates. Does this so you, like, you pile have, of plates come with like a, a table of contents he had to read so, first? So, you like, have, oh, okay. you, so far we have small plates and large plates. Then we have the large plates with commentary. With additions by the commentary person's son. It's an abridgment, though. So the small plates oh, get to the point faster than the big plates do, even though we only have so much room in the plates to write the story, as stated by Nephi in the Book of Nephi. <laughs> this, the plates of Ether, which present a history of the Jaredites, this record was abridged by Moroni, who, so it's abridged by the son, who inserted commandments of his own. What? And incorporated the record with the general history under the title, The Book of Ether. The Plates of Brass. Wait a second, I thought they were gold. We're being lied to. You can't have it both ways, Book of Moron. That is an interesting inconsistency that there are the plates of brass, unless they just go by the brass name. <clears throat> the plates of brass brought by the people of Lehi from Jerusalem in 600 BC. Yeah, so they, they do legitimately think that these people showed up in the Americas from Jerusalem over 2,000 years ago. Wow. These contained the five books of Moses and also a record of the Jews from the beginning down to the commencement of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, and also the prophecies of the holy prophets. Many quotations from these plates citing Isaiah and other biblical and non-biblical prophets appear in the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon comprises 15 main parts or divisions known. When it, see, why do you have to know all this? You don't. I mean, we can jump past this and go right into the first book. You don't really how, need how to much know. longer? Oh, oh, they do have the illustration. Yes. Okay, good. Okay, okay. This is worth it. Well, let, let's just get through this. Let's get through. <coughs> all right, we need to see the pictures. Then we can comment on the pictures. The Book of Moron comprises fifteen main parts or divisions, known with one exception as books, usually designated by the name of their principal author. The first portion, the first six books, ending with Omni, is a translation of, from the small plates of Nephi. Between the books of Omni and Mosiah is an insert called the Words of Moron. These inserts connect the record engraved on the small plates with Moron's abridgment of the larger plates, of the large plates. The longest portion, oh hi Jeremy. The longest portion from Mosiah through Moron chapter seven is a translation of Moron's abridgment of the large plates of Nephi. The concluding portion from Moron chapter eight to the end of the volume was engraved by Moron's son, Moron I, who after finishing the record of his father's life made an abridgment of the Jaredite record as the book of Ether and later added the parts known as the book of Moron I. In or about the year AD 421, Moron I, the last of the Nephite prophet historians, sealed the sacred record and hid it hit it up unto the Lord. So what, did he shove it up his ass and get him through customs? I mean, let's be honest. The, uh, the the account from Joseph Smith we just read was could be taken very sexually. So maybe, I mean, like, <laughs> very, very well, maybe. I, I About that account. That's I, how you carry the burden I of do, Christ. I, 
I do like how the angel was like coming down and going back up and coming down and coming back up. It was up. the ultimate tease. Well, the thing is, <laughs> I, it's interesting to note that the witness testimony was like, we are sober, we are sober. And then they never said that about the angel. So for all we know, he comes down and he's like, <laughs> Yo, Joseph, I gotta, you gotta get these plates. <clears throat> Oh, hold on. And then he like beams up. And just vomits in and then it comes <laughs> Vomits and comes back down. And he's like, I remember what I got to tell you. And he says the same exact thing word for word. <laughs> Twice. And then he does it again where the plates are. But he's like, oh, hold on. I totally forgot, bro. You got to wait a year. <laughs> I do like that you called it out that that you know the uh, the the angel's sobriety was not remotely touched yeah. or talked about. In or about the year AD four twenty one, the last of the Nephite prophet historians sealed the sacred record and hid it up unto the Lord to be brought forth in the latter days, the final days of the last days. As predicted by the voice of God through his ancient prophets in AD eighteen twenty three, the same moron I then a resurrected personage visited the prophet Joseph Smith and subsequently delivered the engraved plates to him about this edition. The original title page immediately preceding the contents page is taken from the plates and is not, and is part of the sacred text. Introductions in a non-italic typeface, such as in one Nephi and immediately preceding Mosiah chapter 9, are also part of the sacred text. Introductions in italics, such as in chapter headings, are not original to the text, but our study helps include for convenience in reading. Some minor errors in the script have been perpetuated in past edition, editions of the Book of Mormon. Moron, sorry. This edition contains corrections that seem appropriate to bring the material into conformity with the pre-publication manuscripts and early editions edited by the Prophet Joseph Smith. Okay, so it's not even a perfect book. We can't get the we can't get the text right. Okay, so, introductions in a non-italic typeface are part of the te sacred text. Introductions in italics are not original. Yeah, so that's the one thing that the Book of Mormon does do, and I really actually like that, this aspect. So, like, the one positive thing from this is before each chapter, they have an italicized, like, quick summary of the gist of what's going on. Which the Bible, like the Old New Testament, blatantly lack in most versions I've read. Um, so it's kind of nice. It helps you like quickly skim through to find the stories you want versus having to have like chapter and verse. So like, bravo for making this at least more accessible, but it doesn't make your content any less garbage. Yes, Donald James, I call it the Book of Moron because it's so absurd so far. Illustrations. Il il Illustrations. Now we're to the fun part. Okay, off to a good start. Oh, white, white Jesus. So, I mean, granted, this is telling a testament of, you know, Israelites or whatever in, in America. So, like, totes get it. But, I mean, Jesus still, I, I believe, before the book, was in Jerusalem and did all the things in the Old Testament. So why is he still white? Because reasons, dude. At least they didn't give him blue eyes, like blonde hair. Blonde hair, blue, blue eyes. eyes. You know, or, Aryan or, Jesus. Or worse, blonde hair and green eyes. Jesus is really just a super saiyan. That's Joseph Smith. He is punchable. Uh, yeah, he's pretentious as shit. I mean, let's be honest. Those are. Let's oh, I, I like this. <laughs> I like this. Lord Jesus Christ painting by Heinrich Hoffman, right? Mm, yeah. Then they have <laughs> Prophet Joseph Smith painting by Alvin Gittens. See my full published works. <laughs> <laughs> This is who uh, J.K. Rowling based yeah. the entire character he's off got, of. He's got, like, the equivalent of an ad under his little thing here. Like, you could at least be like, Jesus, see published works in the Bible. <laughs> but down here, they have his and they don't have Jesus's. <laughs> yeah, the, the New and Old Testament aren't important. All right, what do we got here? A bunch of white people. Uh, I don't think I can turn this because this is a super simple PDF reader, unfortunately. Lehi discovers the Liahona. 
painting by Arnold Freiberg. Basically, what you need to know about this is they're all white. They got the garb kind of right, though. I mean, like that, that is that is seemingly suitably Middle Eastern. Yeah, but they're they're all white. They're like Vikings trending toward slightly Slavic. They have palm trees and a camel. Come on, how much more info do you need to say this is the Middle East? How much more like? <laughs> how much more like? Ooh, trivial fact: In a previous career, there. As a funeral mortician, there is a large LDS community in Oregon. I've helped with a lot of funerals in LDS churches. They are often the most ludicrous services I've ever seen. I need, ooh, ooh, do dis, do yeah, describe. I think do I need, describe. I need a description of how ludicrous. Is this like they've gone plaid it's so ludicrous? or? Oh, are they like a prophet so-and-so? Do they lie on top of the body and try to get it to come back to life? I mean, I'm sure these people aren't stupid. They're just indoctrinated from birth. It's like any Christian, right? When Christians say really silly and dumb things, uh, it's it's because you were indoctrinated from birth into this stuff. So to you, it's completely normal. So I used to be ignorant. Stupid. Ignorant is probably a better way uh, to to describe that. But I, I mood, Donald. I, I appreciate it. I used to be stupid as fuck. I mean, it does make you sound stupid when you say some of the shit that's in these books. Yes, that is... Oh, God, we haven't gotten to that yet. The fact that Native Americans are also white. Well, that, some are white, and then some get turned red because they were naughty. <laughs> they, oh, they that. have they have magical... Oh, that's right! Don't Ooh. they have, like, the magic magic underwear? <clears throat> I've heard jokes about wait, the magic underwear. Wait, there's magic underwear? I want magic underwear. <laughs> <laughs> like, is it like a, a plus two fortitude? Oh, here like we that? go! Lehi and his people arrive in the promised land. All right, so we've got, um, we've got, like, really stereotypically white, um, 1800s English woman. It's a portrait of every Karen in America. Yeah. That's where, that's, that's Karen Prime. We've got, like, strong jaw Italian guy. John Cena. Jesus jammies. I like it. <laughs> We've got uh, just standard white people hanging out. We've got Santa, I guess. The burial underwear is basically super large diapers. <laughs> oh my god. They are called temple garments. Temple garments, a.k.a. Jesus Jimmy's. <laughs> That explains why I've heard them lampooned as magic underwear. Oh my god. Where do I get my pair of Jesus jammies? That's all I want to know. Does it protect me from Jesus? Like, Is it anti-Jesus is underwear? Is it anti-Jesus? <laughs> is it to prevent him from coming into my soul? Because I don't want him in my soul. <laughs> coming other places? Baphomet's already there and he's more fun. Oh, we got another sideways one. Alright, she looks very white. He looks very Viking. They look kind of red, so they're probably bad, because anybody that's not white is usually bad in stories like this. Alma baptizes in the waters of Moron. Painting by Arnold Freiberg. This is amazing. Jesus is the only one that doesn't have a reference. Yeah, he doesn't need a reference. Jesus is like God, bro. Ostensibly, this book is trying to proselytize to people. No, it's They're probably right. like, oh, Jesus seems kind of cool. Looking, let's let's like... be honest. This book is trying to tell you that Joseph Smith is more important than Jesus in the law. <laughs> it's it's the written between the lines subtext you're not getting. Samuel the Lamanite prophecies. Prophes do they do they try to spell prophesize? I don't know. I mean, this isn't That's exactly prophecy. a Wait, work of isn't that prophecy? Literal greatness. I want to know how much Arnold Freiberg. I thought prophesize was P R O P H E C I E S. You're the writer, love, not me. I don't remember. Oh, why do they do this? Oh, for sure, Jeremy. The, the... Oh, there we go, Aryan Jesus. Woo, Aryan oh, Jesus. And they cite. The... All right, Jesus visits the Jesus Christ visits the Americas, and they're pretty fucking white too, especially because these look like Incas or Aztecs, maybe. Yeah, this looks like we've dipped into South America. Because they've style got here. they've got like a ziggurat back there, 
and uh, he's like, yo, let me lighten your skin color. So Touch you my finger ahead. holes. Because this is, you know, well, he comes to them after, finger after my resurrection, holes. right? This isn't, this isn't Jesus in the living in the flesh. This is, the, this is the resurrected Christ coming to America. Joseph Smith, there's the plates! Moron eye buries the Nephite record. I call bullshit that that many plates made this many pages of books, of work. Yeah. We they, even they, see, we're, they, we're in the little plates. We just see big plates. Or Tom, the... Tom Lovell made a mistake of showing the plates. <laughs> also, did he dig that hole with his sword? That seems super inefficient. This is like thinking that predators were once vegetarian before, you know, the flood happened or whatever. Yeah, I... What the fuck? Although, I mean, like, come on. If that appeared in your bedroom four times. What? That's Moroni. Oh, that's right. I mean, come on. Hunk. He looks kind of like Khan. Yeah, he does. He does look a lot like the old Khan. (laughs) (laughs) First book of Nephi. So we got 15 minutes left. How, How far do you want to get into this? Um... Actually, I think here's a good stopping point. Um, My voice is getting tired. Okay, well, we can stop here tonight. Yeah. So this is... How long are these chapters? They're not horrendously long. So we covered... They're pretty short. We we could probably get through like four or five chapters. if, If It all depends on how much bullshit comes up. Yeah. It, this is just like layer upon layer upon layer of like citation needed, citation needed, citation needed. Then it's going to be a real slow slog, kind of like that video we're working on. <laughs> yeah, that's that's quite the video. All right, I think we're I think we're going to call the book here. The, what, re- the reading here. What would you guys think? Yeah, what what uh, what were the thoughts? Do about we like this the, format? Do we like the book? The the first. Like unscripted, just kind of bullshitting live stream. Oh, I, I did see the uh, I did see the Ewan McGregor Jesus. That was pretty amazing. The Obi Wan Kenobi Jesus. Hmm. Yeah, there, there are multiple of that Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, picture floating around, and it, it makes me smile every time. The ASMR was solid. Okay. I mean, oh, we, God. We can trend into that. I hated doing that so much. I did enjoy it. You know the... what, Forging Thought? I'll do it just for you. I'll do it just for you. I do like the uh, the L.A. Noir reading. It was certainly moronic. Thank you. I appreciate that. I, I will choose to take that as a compliment. <laughs> So the question, Christine, is, is the book garbage? Uh, and how does, well, it is garbage, obviously, but does it compare back to the Bible as being more or less garbage than the Old and New Testaments? Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Here, let's do this. Stop capturing the cursor there. All right, um, let's, let's do a quick poll here. What's dumber so far? Did you just spell the Bibble? Yes. <laughs> what, what have we got? What's, what's dumber so far? The Book of Moron or the Bibble? Ah, uh, man. I know where I'm going. I won't, I won't, I won't influence chat with my, with my perspective. We're not... We're not looking at, um, we're, we're ignoring moral value. We're just looking at, we're just looking at the sheer, like, the, the premise. Oh, yeah, we can, uh, we should be able to zoom in on the book next time. Let me, uh, 
Let me see if I can do it here. Just hold control and spin the mouse. Uh, there you go. Let's go. Ah. Wait. Oh, oh God. It's Wait, is it natural scrolling with the mouse? <laughs> I think in between the uh, streams, we should also find a better PDF reader. Than yeah. This one. Um, is that kind of size better for you, dear? I'll give it a few, yeah, I'll give it a few seconds. See if, see if that kind of size is better for you. Yeah, that's a good point, Christine. I feel like the Book of Mor Moron has to be dumber because at least the Bible can pretend it was a product of its time. Oh, yeah, because this was written, you know, theoretically, what, 1,800 years later after Christ died? Although Forging Thought says, I feel like the, 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 I say the Bible because the Book of Mormon exists because of the Bible. No Bible, no moron. No Bible, no moron. Yeah, but I mean... It's pretty close. How many votes do we have? We have 13. Okay, so people are trending toward Book of Moron. I guess it does depend on how you look at it. It's like, if you're... Well, hold, fox hold it. Understand fox is pretty that good. right now, um, we haven't even gotten to the Book of Mormon. Oh, that's true. We're just like in We're the just front the, matter. Like the front annotations of like, <laughs> please believe us, this is real. Yeah, we've, we've only made it to the... We were the sober part. when we wrote it. <laughs> we're only through the part where they're like, listen to us, believe us, please. Take our word for it. We know what we're talking about. Yeah, I'm not really looking forward to reading Nephi because I've read the first chapter or two of the book of Nephi and it's, it's pedantic. Oh, God. Ooh, book of... Book of Moron is jumping up ahead. Damn. You got 17 votes. Yeah, it, it just jumped like five <clears throat> votes, pulling ahead with three quarters over the middle. I'm interested to see just how reprehensible the Book of Moron is, though. If it's just like oh, inane. If it's just, if it's just as misogynistic as the Bible, or it's just as awful. Yeah, or if it's just inane, stupid shit. I mean, the whole... I don't know, it's rough. <laughs> the first book of Nephi is is talking about how a bunch of history and how little time they have to write all this stuff in a little space. It's, I don't know. 70% the Book of Mormon? I mean, all right. I, I could agree with that so far, I think. But we got to, like, chill this chat um, bot down. I don't know why it's flagging things that are not freaking, that, like, freak out things. It keeps flagging non-offensive things. All right, everybody. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I really do appreciate it. I thought we'd have like five or six people, and we have 30 right now. We had about 20 most of the time. So thank you so much for joining. It was really wonderful. Hopefully we made you all laugh and uh, have a, a little funny, fun, silly time on a Sunday afternoon. Um, or Sunday night. It's Sunday afternoon or night. And I'll, 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 it's like coming to church. We're reading, <laughs> we're reading the Book of Mormon at an afternoon church service with a fun church. A fun church. Well, more a fun. healthy I mean, church. I, I don't think a church in <laughs> Salt Lake City would be doing LA noir pornos with Book of Mormon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Well, regardless, hopefully it was fun. And uh, I don't know when we'll do this one next. I don't know if it will be an every week thing, but this was enjoyable and it's not too stressful. So I'll probably keep doing it. If you are a uh, shameless plug, if you are interested in seeing me on a uh, call-in show, I was on Truth Wanted Friday night. That is up and uh, I was relatively well received. So you can see me there. Most of the calls were pretty good um if nothing else go listen for john he's oh yeah like, he's like the th like the second to last caller he i think he was the last caller i ripped him apart at the end um and uh I, we were talking earlier it's interesting because um a lot of the comments are really nice to me 
in the in the comment box. But then uh, I have the uh, highest dislike ratio on the actual video yeah. of the last couple. It's also only been out for a day or two, so. Yeah. Interesting. So, if you want to see me on a call-in show, that was my first call-in show Friday night on Truth Wanted. And uh, I'm sure they would love the views as well. So, cheers to everybody. Have a good afternoon. Thank you for joining. And we will talk to you another time. We love you. Bye. Bye.